that voice is always so weird. I don't know if you hear it when it records, but it's like, who made that voice? Recording in progress. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good. Well, first, thank you so much for doing this interview. I'm really excited to talk to you just about so many things when it comes to the project and faith and everything. So let's start it off. So Church Closed For is the last in the mixtape series. So I loved that you said it's righteous, but ratchet. So when did you realize you had to embrace both sides? Um, I just kept catching flack for being me. And I was like, this is weird. You know what I mean? Like, you know, this is just strange that y'all I, I, it's certain little things like when I first got my locks, I got locks and people were like, ah, you look a little dangerous. And, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? Or, um, you know, wearing a bottom grill in a video, you know, this, this is just how I grew up. And so uh, and then even just like, I mean, if I'm out and you know, there's certain songs that come on and you 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 going to participate because it's just in you, you know what I'm saying, your DNA. So uh, I don't know, man, it's just who I am. But then the thing I always just like to tell people is you wouldn't have the me you have now if if that aspect of me was never, you know, uh, never came to play. It doesn't mean like I'm trying to do all the, the, the evil stuff with it. But, yeah, I'm just a, that's who I am. And, you know, that sometimes that's hard to because of someone who is very open about his faith, but then you're also willing to show the ratchet side that aren't necessarily, you know, accepted because sometimes people think to have a relationship with God or be Christian, like you have to be perfect. And that's literally not the case or else we would not be blessed like how we were, if that were the case. So how did you overcome that, you know, that, that judgment of it, or just, you know, I'm sure you got it where people are like, Oh, like you're supposed to be Christian. Why are you rapping about this? Or why are you dressing dressing in that way? So how did you overcome that? I think I just had to, one, I have good friends. And a friend of mine told me a while back, he said, um, stop listening to the voices that don't genuinely care about you. Listen to the ones that do. And I realized there were just a lot of people who didn't know me and didn't genuinely care about me. Like the voices of people who, whether I'm, way off the beaten path and I need to get back on track, they still would love me and, and treat me like a brother. Those are the voices I really want to hear. And, um, and that just gave me a different level of confidence to be who I was. Cause those voices were like, you're good. You're fine. You know, be exactly who you were created to be. How many people would you say are in your inner circle where you actually, you appreciate and respect their voice when they are giving you some kind of advice or want to call you out on something. Oh yeah. I have, I mean, I would say I have like a couple circles, right? Like I got a, I got a circle. Okay. And that circle is like people I know who are free to speak into my life, you know, then I have an inner, inner circle of people who I'll expose like more details to. So maybe like the inner circle or or the circle will know, man, I'm not doing too well. The inner circle will know, man, my wife's getting on my nerves. The <laughs> inner inner circle will know, like, I don't like the way she chews, fam. Like, I, I you know what I mean? So um, this, those three in my inner inner circle is like four people. Okay. So inner inner then inner, then big circle. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I've never heard the inner, inner. Yeah. I like, I'm, I'm going to steal that one from you. Yeah. So going into the project. So what I like to do is I'll pick some of my favorite tracks and I'll pull a lyric where it's about the lyric, but not really about the lyric to get into the, the personal side of the artist. So the first one I want to start with is spread the ops. So my favorite line was, Lord, help me kill all of my demons. I look in the mirror, I see them. What demon have you already overcome that you are? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. I would say, um, you know, they always want to pop up and, and do some, you know, kind of remind you. But I would say the one that has been getting killed the most is discontentment, right? Like, I was you know, fame and money 
are like hunger, right? Like you, you can eat the best meal you ever had at eight in the morning. By 8 p.m., you're going to be hungry again. And that's what fame and money are. You will always be discontent if you if you live your life chasing those things. So I think that's the demon that like is just the hunger for nothingness, discontentment. And I found myself just in a place recently where I'm like, man, I'm just glad I got people I love who love me. I'm glad I get to wake up and do what I love to do. I'm glad that, you know, uh, man, I'm in my right mind today. And and let me be content with those little things. Isn't it amazing, too, that when you learn to be grateful and content for the small things, that the even bigger things come? Without even asking for it. Without even asking for them, because you can handle them, you know, because they don't, they're not a distraction for you. You're not like, I gotta have it. You know, it's like, oh, well, cool. Thanks. What's the next demon that you're trying to overcome? Um, maybe like uh warm chocolate chip cookies. That's probably the one I'm trying to <laughs> overcome right now. <laughs> um nah, I would I would just say um I would say being, you know, forgetting about myself more, like, like not considering myself, but like not making myself the star of every show. Um, like the world doesn't have to revolve around me. Okay. And I think I need to be OK with that. Right. Like I need to be OK with people making decisions they make and I'm not included or I'm not whatever it is. It's like just be OK with you know it hey just you know mind your business and keep it moving it don't involve you and it's and that's okay you're not in the inner inner circus <laughs> right and that's okay and that's okay <laughs> so the next one fear not so this song focuses on not having any fear and standing firm on what you believe and knowing that god will work it out in the end mm -hmm. so sometimes it's hard to always have that faith you know in those moments so what helps you in those times yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I have to really renew my mind and like I have to feed, you know, that the saying like there's two dogs that are about to get into a fight. One of them's good. One of them's bad. Which one's going to win is the one you feed more. And I have to feed the good dog more. You know, um, that that helps me like meditation, prayer, um, listening to a podcast that reminds me of truth I need to hear. Like those are all really helpful things for me to put me back, put things back in perspective and allow me not to be overwhelmed by whatever fears may come my way. Who are some of your favorite podcasts that you listen to that help you get back to that place? Um, Man, I love uh, um, there's one called Practicing the Way. Um, It's really phenomenal. Just, you know, focusing on silence and solitude. Um. Let me see. Uh, I love there's these these ladies called Truth's Table. They're phenomenal. Um, and um, I'm trying to think of what other one kind of puts me in that perspective. I mean, those are those are two major ones that I can think of just right off the bat that really. Oh, you know, Southside Rabbi is another one my guy KB, you know what I mean? And so it's just like, it's just, it's righteous and ratchet. And it just like really- I'm like that series. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that, that's amazing. Um, my next one, misconceptions for, what's the biggest misconception of you? Oh man, there's so many of them, but I, I would say um, the biggest misconception is that I am, that I pick a side. Like I do not pick sides. And I think that's what people don't really, I'm very nuanced. I think people expect me to be black and white and they keep wanting me to be black, very, is it black or is it white? And I'm, I'm a nuanced person. So, you know, it's like, what's your favorite food? Both of them. That's, you gotta choose one. No, I don't. You said I have to choose one. I don't have to choose one. And I think people expect me to like, you got to be the type of Christian that I know. No, I don't. Or you got to be the type of rapper I know. No, I don't. I don't have to fit in any of your categories. And that's and I'm fine there. So, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, one of the lines I really liked from this was 
like, look at me. I'm friends with Kendrick. I'm not a, I'm not a lame. So, you know, you have your friendship with Kendrick. What's the best advice you've ever gotten from Kendrick? You know, what's funny is I'm not, this is not in er me trying to be arrogant. He would typically come to me for advice. Okay. What's the best so, advice you give Kendrick? Yeah. I, I think I know one that really resonated was we were watching a Bob Marley documentary and I was like, bro, this is you. And and he was kind of like, you know, what you mean? And I was like, this is you. Like, if you look at his life and look at the impact that he was having on the culture around him, it was, he made great music, but there was a, like an impact that he was, an indelible impact he was having on people. And I was like, I see you becoming this. And this is before he was like who he is now. And, um, and so, man, I just, I think that was, that was a really pivotal moment you know, just to be able to see that. Next one, protect my peace. What does peace mean to you? Um, peace is the ability to look forward to things and to reflect on things that have happened in the past. Like if you don't have enough time and margin in your life to look forward to something or to reflect, you're going too fast and there's too much disruption in your life. And so everybody just needs time to just be able to sit back and be like, man, I can't wait till I go on my girl's trip. It's going to be so fun. Ooh, we could do this. We can. You need to be able to sit and think about that. Not just like, you want to do a girl's trip? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, my calendar. Let me see my calendar. I don't know. And it, ugh, they're getting on my nerves. I can't stand them. Oh, it's like. Get away from all of that. Have enough time to look forward to what's coming and then reflect. You remember when we used to, wasn't that fun? Like you need that, that's peace. You know what I mean? I have to acknowledge, I like your impersonation of the girl who's annoyed about her girl's trip and being annoyed by the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Another line, they offer my mentions. I feel disrespected. I used to get at them, but now I neglect it. What helped you to ignore the the hate and negativity, especially on social media when it's literally everywhere now? Therapy, straight therapy. up. Therapy. My therapist was like, you you really have to stop reading these comments. Mm -hmm. um, because you're thinking it's nothing. You're like, eh, it's nothing. I'm a, I'm a whole grown man. Like, I don't care about what this little troll is saying to me. <laughs> but it really was affecting my mental health. You know, and you, I think we... We don't realize it. It's kind of like we're going to find out 10 years from now the real effects of a lot of this stuff in the same way. Like, you know, 10 years ago, fast food didn't know. It was so it, we didn't know we didn't have all these movies and documentaries and it was like, oh, shoot, this is what sugar is and all of these things. And now we're overcorrecting and we got smoothies on the menu and you go to fast food and everybody's got a salad now. It's like I think we're going to come to reality. And we did not know the mental emotional effects of social media until we've had enough time did your therapist give you advice on how to not because easier said than done how do you not right. look at it on the phone right, so was right. there uh, were, were there steps that you took to make sure you protected yourself from that or did your therapist have advice on how to do it yeah um a friend of mine was telling me that um ariana grande had had gone into the back inside of one of her social media apps and added a bunch of words that were very triggering for her. And if those words popped up, then she wouldn't be able to see the comment. And so I went in and did the same thing and added a bunch of words um, on Instagram specifically. So if these particular words popped up, I would never see them. So people were just talking to themselves. And so you can go into the back. I don't remember how I did it exactly, but um but that helped me out a lot because then I wasn't seeing a lot of the negative comments. And, and over time, you know, I may add some stuff back in because it's not as triggering for me now. I've had a lot of therapy, but for a season, it was like, yo, there's certain terms I don't even want to see because if I see it, it's going to be triggering for me. I didn't even know that was a thing, but definitely I'm going to clip that and make sure <laughs> I put that on social media. But isn't it? It's one of the best feelings when something that was once a trigger does not trigger you anymore. It, it yes. really is. So, and, and I love that you you go to therapy as well. I think everybody should at least go when they're ready because yes. you don't need it.
Last no. last line from that song. I have a few more for you. Um, don't get mad at me if my phone's on DND. <laughs> so when is your phone on do not disturb? <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm just saying there's some times where it's like, I'm just one of those type of people where I feel like I got to save the world all the time or answer everybody's questions and stuff. And I just had gotten to a place where I was like, yo, when I'm sitting down for a meal, I'm D and D, you know what I mean? I'm going to be present in this moment and enjoy the moment. Like, and I just started doing that. Like, it's okay to be present. Um, so so it could be random things now. Now it could be going out for a meal. If I'm at an event or a concert or if I'm just hanging out with some good friends, it's like, look, it's OK if I am if we're out hanging out and I never touch my phone for these whole two hours that there's nothing wrong with that. And so, I mean, I'm just like, yo, don't be mad that you can't get a hold of me because I got a life outside of all of the stuff that you, you know, you got going on. Two things to unpack in that answer. So is it on DND for the inner, inner circle and the inner circle and the big circle or just? That's a good question. <laughs> nah, that inner, inner circle, they can get at me whenever. Okay. Because you, know? you never know what's going on. We, the inner, inner is crucial. The inner, inner is when you're like, the inner, inner is, is basically the people who are like, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to I'm going to sit with you and I'm going to understand why you killed these people and then I'm going to turn you in. But at first, I'm going to sit with you. We're going to work through this together because, you know, I don't want to just but I'm, I'm still going to turn you in, fam. I just want you to know that. And that's the inner inner circle because they okay. really, really care about you. They're like, all right, let's get your lawyer together. Let's figure out, OK, what are we going to do? And then I'm going to take you to the police station because you got to be turned in, fam. So, you know, that's the inner inner. Exactly. They usually say the inner inner will 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 bury the body with you, but I don't want those kind of friends anymore. That will bury the body with you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you brought up meals twice, so I have to know what is that go to meal that absolutely your phone is on DND because you have to enjoy every bite of it. Oh man, that's a good question. I can't eat it as much as I like to because it's not healthy for me. But it's soul food, man. If I'm if I if you give me some some catfish, some collard greens, some macaroni and cheese, I can't eat it consistently because it's so bad for me. But but every so often I will. The other thing is crab legs, some crab legs done right with the right sauce and the, the seasoning. Yeah. Like, don't talk to me. I'm not <laughs> available. I'm not available. I'm so happy you brought up soul food because that's the perfect transition into. So two more for you. Two more songs. Journey, you said been all around the world bringing soul food. Million dollars later, still I ain't eating tofu. So you brought up your favorite foods, but what are your least favorite foods that fall in the circle of tofu? <laughs> yeah, um, I, you know what they say, you know, oh man, you know, you got to try, you know, train your palate needs to expand now. And every time I go try to expand my palate, I'm I'm disappointed. Um, but yeah, least favorite foods, anything raw. I don't do raw, raw meat not doing it so no i don't eat sushi i'm sorry i don't i don't like it i don't eat sushi and i'm asian so i'm like the most contradicting asian to not eat sushi i feel like i i can't do i don't steak tartare whatever raw i'm not doing it i can't do the raw food i'm just not i'm not the guy um let's see yeah i tried to be vegan for two weeks it didn't work for me you know all all the like like if you have to make a substitute chicken nugget that means chicken nuggets are good that that means they're good so if if you have to create something that tastes like something else good then what you have is not good make like no one's making fake cauliflower because it's not good you know what i'm saying so i'm that's the biggest eater so i completely agree and even on that note you brought up um in the previous answer you were talking about the different documentaries that came out about the food was there a food documentary that you watched where you were like oh i should maybe reconsider did they not have an effect oh yeah no they had an effect on me like some of them longer than others but definitely like um like what the health or food ink it was like eat. Yeah, I got to change up stuff. So I started after Food Inc., I think I went organic for sure. Like I was like, yo, I'm eating organic food because I didn't realize like this is crazy the way that this this stuff is going down. But 
you know, but some stuff didn't last as long. Like I uh, forgot the one with the juice. The guy was juicing the whole thing. I started doing it and then I was like, I can't keep this up. This isn't going to work. And so I didn't yeah. watch Food Inc. I watched What the Hell. It didn't really change me. Not going to lie. You were still, yeah, I understand. I mean, the the I forgot the guy was supersized me or something like that. He went to McDonald's and ate that every day. I mean, I'm like, hey, man, you do you. I wouldn't eat it every day. But you gotta, you gotta have some McDonald's fries from every so often. You got to, and their Coke or their High C. That's it's mandatory. <laughs> the High C. Where else you gonna get that? I'm like, so happy they brought that back because they did get rid of it for a little bit. And that was to their. That's why they had to bring it back because they knew they were wrong. They knew they I, messed up. So two more questions for you. So the last one on journey. Gotta forgive myself if I know that the Lord forgive me. What was the th- what was the hardest thing you had to forgive yourself for? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, I'm a, I, I'm really like, I can let shame, shame can get real toxic for me. So for other people, it may not be that big of a deal, but for me, it can be really, really toxic to where I'm just down on myself and I'm just beating myself up for something that I've done. Um, and I would say, um, I would probably say like, there's moments when I feel like I'm not the father that I want to be. You know, one of the things that was hard to give myself for is a lot of the traveling I did early on. You know, I just traveled a lot, wasn't around my kids as much as I wanted to be. And um, and I, I didn't know any better because I wasn't raising my dad. So I was thinking I could come home and make up for it and just go on wild adventures and do cool stuff. But sometimes it's not about that. It's just about consistency. And so... um you know, I would tend to feel bad for that. I made every birthday and stuff like that. But, you know, of course, there were just just moments that was like, man, I was gone for three months. You know what I mean? And it's like, yikes. You know, that was a consistent reality. So stuff like that. OK, my last one, deconstruction. So this song focuses on finding your way. So what advice do you have for people who think it's too late to find their way back to God and their faith? Yeah, <clears throat> I would say um, every human being is made with purpose, right? And if you're, whether you ascribe to to God or not, you're going to live your life as if there's, you you have purpose. And if there's no God, there is no purpose because you're just a random cosmic accident. You're just a bunch of molecules and atoms. So who cares? Like, why care about anybody? Why fall in love? Why enjoy things? Nothing matters. Like, Nothing matters. You don't matter, but you do matter. And because you matter, you were made with purpose, with intent. And I think that's enough of a motivation to get a person to say, you know what? I don't understand the intent behind my creation and who made me, but I need to care. And because I'm here for a reason. And so let me get to the person that had an intention for me and let me build my relationship back with God because he loves me and he cares for me. And I I would just say too, the last thing I would just say on that is um, I know a lot of us haven't experienced great parents, but as me who has a, 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 you know, is a parent and would imagine I'm trying my best to be a good one. There's nothing my kids can do to make me love them more or love them less. Nothing. I'm always going to love them regardless of what they do or what they say. And so I may be hurt or disappointed, but I'm always willing to welcome them back into my arms. And if God is better than me, we're in good hands. That's a great comparison. On my last one, since this is the last of the church closed series, what's what's next and when can we expect more music? And yeah, your next book. I think people should enjoy the holidays. And then when the new year starts, Maybe some of that music that was on the cutting room floor might appear. I'm just saying, maybe some music that didn't come out is going to come out. Maybe some big features that didn't make the project will actually come to light. I don't know. That would be my thought, but stay tuned. I'm going to have to ask the inner inner circle. There they you go. Coming out. Well, like, <laughs> it was so great to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time to do this and for all the advice. Congratulations on all of your success. And I, I learned a lot from this and it was very inspirational. 
Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you. And, you know, glad we were able to do it inside these little boxes. Yes. No, next mm -hmm. time, next time you're in LA, I definitely would love to do something in person. Our schedule it just did not line up. Yeah. I'm glad no, we were I totally to understand. All right. If anybody gets it, I do. Because <laughs> I keep people on D&D. &D, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Things to do out here.